YouTube. Uh, it's time for the essay. Uh, this is my second try at it. Um, something uh, is bothering my, my nose. I'm sorry. It's a, very itchy, so if I rub across it, I do apologize, but let's try this again and keep my fingers away from my nose. Uh, it's called Old Booksellers uh, by Augustin Burrell. It's uh, another one from his In the Name of the Bodleian. Uh, there has been a small flutter amongst those who used to be called stationers or text writers in the good old days before printing was, and when, even peers of the realm, now so highly educated, could not sign their names, or at all events uh, performed not uh, to do so, preferred not to do so. Booksellers they are now styled, and the question which agitates them is discount. Having mentioned this, one naturally passes on. Uh, no great trade has an obscure history than the book trade. It seems to lie choked in mountains of dust which it would be suicidal to disturb. Men have lived from time to time of literary skill. Dr. Johnson was one of them who had knowledge, extensive and peculiar, of the traditions and practices of the trade, as it is proudly styled by its votaries. But nobody has ever thought it worth his well to make record of his knowledge which accordingly perished with him and is now irrecoverably, irrecoverably lost. In old days booksellers were also publishers, frequent printers and frequently printers and sometimes uh, paper makers. Jacob Thompson Tonson uh, not only owned Milton's Paradise Lost for all time, as he fondly thought, for little did he dream the fierce construction of the House of Lords was to put upon the Copyright Act of Queen Anne. Not only was Dryden's publisher, but also kept shop in Chancellery Lane and sold books across the counter. He allowed no discount, but, so we are told, quote, spoke his mind upon all occasions and flattered no one, end quote, not even Glorious John. For a long time past, the trades of book selling and book publishing have been carried on apart. This has doubtless rid booksellers of all the unpopularity which formed, uh, formerly belonged uh, to them in their other capacity. The unpopularity is now heaped as a whole upon the publishers, who certainly need not dread the doom awaiting those of whom the world speaks well. A tendency of the two trades to grow together again is perhaps noticeable. For my, my part, I wish they would. Some publishers are already booksellers, but the books they sell are usually only new books. Now, it is obvious that the true bookseller sells both old and new. Some booksellers are occasionally publishers, may each usurp or rather resume the business of the other whilst retaining his own. The world, it must be admitted, owes a great deal of whatever information it possesses about the professions, trades, and occupations practiced and carried on in its midst to those who have failed in them. Prosperous men talk shop, but seldom write it. The book that tells the most about booksellers and bookselling in the bygone days is the work of a crack-brained fellow who published and sold in the reigns of Queen Anne and George I, and died in 1733 in great poverty and obscurity. I refer to John Dutton, whose life and errors, in the edition uh, in the edition in two volumes edited by J.B. Nichols and published in 1818, uh, is a common book enough in the second-hand shops, and one which may be safely recommended to everyone, except, indeed, to the unfortunate man or woman who is not an adept in the act, craft, or mystery of skipping. The book will strangely remind the reader of Amory's Life of John Buncle, whose queer volumes to uh, which many a reader has been sent by Hazlitt's intoxicating description of them in his round table, and a few perhaps by the shy illusion, illusion contained in one of the essays of Elia. The real John Dutton was not the boundless spirits of the fictitious John Buncle, but in their religious fervor, their passion for flirtation, their tireless egotism, and their love of character sketching, they greatly re resemble one another. It is this last characteristic that imparts real value to Dutton's book, and makes it, despite its verbiage and tortuosity, throb with human interest. For example, he gives us a short 
sketch of no less than 135 then living booksellers in in this style quote mr newton is full of kindness and good nature he is affable and courteous in trade and is none of those men of 40 whose religion is yet to choose for his mind like his looks is serious and grave and his neighbors tell me his understanding does not improve too fast for his practice for he is not religious by start or sally but is well fixed in the faith and practice of the church of england man and has a handsome wife into the bargain End quote. most of the 135 booksellers were good men according to dutton but not all quote, mr lee in lombard street such a pirate such a cormorant was never before copies books men shops all was one he held no propriety uh, right or wrong good or bad till at last he began to be known and the booksellers not uh, enduring so ill a man among them spewed him out and if off he marched to the uh, to ireland where he acted as felonious lee as he did in london and as lee lived the thief he died a hypocrite hypocrite uh, for being asked on his deathbed if he would forgive Mr. C that had formerly wronged him. Yes, said Lee, if I die, I forgive him. But if I happen to live, I am resolved to be revenged on him. End quote. The act of union destroyed the trade of these parties, pirates, uh, but their felonious editions of 18th century authors still abound. Mr. Gladstone, I need scarcely say, was careful in his home room bill, uh, which was denounced by thousands who never read a line of it, to withdraw copyright from uh, the scope of action of his proposed Dublin Parliament. There are nearly 1,100 brief character sketches in Dutton's book of all sorts and kinds, but with uh, prefer preference for book people, bookish people. Uh, divines both of the establishment and out of it, printers and authors, Sometimes, indeed, the description is short enough and tells one very little. To many readers, references uh, so curt uh, to people of whom they never heard and whose names are recorded nowhere else save on their moldering gravestones may seem tedious and trivial, but for others they will have a strange fascination. Here are a few examples. Quote, Affable Wiggins his conversation is general but never impertinent. The kind, uh, the kind of golden venables. He is, he is, so good a man and so truly charitable. He that will write of him must still write more. Mister Burry, my old neighbor in Red Cross Street, uh, he is a plain, honest man. Sells the best coffee in all the neighborhood, and lives. In, in this world like a spiritual stranger and pilgrim in the foreign country. Anabaptist, alias Elephant Smith, he was a man of great sincerity and happy contentment in all circumstances of life, end quote. Uh, if an affection uh, for passage of this kind be condemned as trivial and akin to the sentimentalism of the man in Calvary's poem who wept over a box labeled This Side Up, I will shelter myself behind Carlyle, who was an evidently deeply moved, as, the, as his review of Boswell's Johnson proved, by the life history of Mr. F. Lewis, of whose birth, death, and whole terrestrial regest uh, this only and, strange enough, this actually survives. Sir, he lived in London and hung loose upon society. State parve hominis umbra. On that peg, Carlyle's imagination hung a whole biography. Dutton, who was the son of a rector of Ashton Clinton, was apprenticed about 1675 to a London bookseller. He had from the beginning a great turn both for religion and love. He, to he, to use his own phrase, quote, sat under the powerful ministry of Mister Doolittle. One Lord's Day, and I remember it with sorrow, I was to hear the Reverend Mr. Doolittle, and it was then that there the beautiful Rachel Seaton gave me that fatal wound. End quote. 
The first uh, book Dutton ever printed was by the Reverend Mr. Doolittle and was of an eminently religious character. Quote, One Lord's Day, and I am very sensible of the sin, I was strolling about just as my fancy led me, and stepping into Mr. Ainsley's, Annesley's meeting place, where instead of engaging my attention to the doctors, uh, what the doctor said, I suffered both my mind and eyes to run at random, and I soon uh, singled out a young woman that almost charmed me to me dead. But having made my inquiries, I found to my sorrow she was pre-engaged. End quote. However, Dutton was content with the old elder sister, one of the three children of Doctor Ainsley. The, uh, the one he first saw became the wife of Reverend Samuel Wells, Wesley and the mother of John and Charles. The third daughter is said to have married to uh, been married to Daniel Defoe. As soon as he was out of his apprenticeship, Dutton set up, Dutton, uh, set up business as a publisher and bookseller. He says grimly enough, quote, A man should be well furnished with an honest policy if he intends to set up in the world nowadays. And this is no less necessary in a bookseller than any other tradesman, for in that way uh, there are plots and counterplots and a whole army of hackney authors that keep their grinders moving by the travail of their pens. These garmandizers will eat you um, the very life out of a copy so soon as ever it appears for as the times go original and abridgment are almost reckoned as necessary as man and wife end quote. The mischief to which Dutton refers was permitted by the stupidity of the judges who refused to consider an abridgment of a book any interference with its copyright. Some learned judges um have indeed held that an abridger is a benefactor, but as his benefactor benefactions are not his own, but an author's, uh, a short name might be found for him. <laughs> the law on the subject is still uncertain. Dutton proceeds, quote, Printing was now the uppermost in my thoughts, and hackney authors began to ply me with specimens, 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 uh, as earnestly and with as much passion and concern as the watermen do passengers on oars and scullers. I had some acquaintance with this uh, generation in my apprentice apprenticeship and had never any warm affection for them. In regard, I always thought their great concern lay more in how much a sheet than in any generous respect they have in the commonwealth of learning and indeed the learning itself of these gentlemen lies less often in as little room as their honesty though they will pretend to have studied six or seven years in the Bodleian library to have turned over the fathers and to have read and digested the whole compass both of human and ecclesiastic history when alas they have never been able to understand a single page of St. Cyprian and cannot tell you whether the fathers lived before or after Christ. Christ end quote. Yet of one of, his, uh, of this hateful tribe, Dutton was able to speak well. He declares Mr. Bradshaw to have been the best accomplished hackney author he ever met with. He pronounces his style incomparably fine. He had quarreled with him, but nonetheless he writes, quote, if Mr. Bradshaw is yet alive, I here declare to the world and to him that I freely forgive him what he owes both in money and books, if he will only be so kind as to make me a visit. But I am afraid the worthy gentleman is dead, for he was wretchedly overrun with uh, melancholy, and in, and the very blackness of it uh, reigned in his co continence. He had certainly performed wonders with his pen, and not his poverty pursued, had not his poverty pursued him, and almost laid the necess necessity upon him to be unjust. End quote. All hackney authors are not poor. Some of the compilers and abridgers made what even now would be considerable by popular novelists, novelists large sums. 
Scotsmen are very good at it. Gordon and Campbell became wealthy men. If authors had a turn for politics, Sir Robert, Robert Walpole uh, was an excellent paymaster. Arnold, who uh, bred an attorney, is stated to have been paid £11,000 in four years by the government for his pamphlets. And then they quote a little uh, couplet here. Come then, I'll comply. Spirit of Arnal, aid me while I lie. I cannot have been pleased, ple it cannot have been pleasant to write, to read this, but then Pope uh, belonged to the opposition and was a friend of Lord Bolingbroke uh, and would consequently say anything. There is not a more interesting and artless autobiograph autobiography to be read than William Hutton's, the famous bookseller and historian of Birmingham. Hutton um, has been somewhat absurdly called the English Franklin. He is not in the least uh, like Franklin. He has uh, none of Franklin's supreme literary skill, uh, and he was a loving, generous, and tender-hearted man, which Franklin certainly was not. Hutton's first visit to London, ha London was paid in 1749. He walked from Nottingham, spent three days in London, and then walked back to Nottingham. The jaunt, of, jaunt, if such an expression is applicable, cost him 11 shillings less four pence. Yet he paid his way. The only money he spent to gain admission to public places was a penny to see Bedlam. Interesting, however, as is Hutton's book, it tells us next to nothing about book selling, except that, it was, that in his hands it was a prosperous undertaking. So ends... Um, the essay on old booksellers. Um, the next one in the book here is uh, a few words about copyright in books. So that might be uh, that would be the last one. I think it's uh, rather short. Um, well, shorter than than the one I just read. So yeah, so I might uh, do that one tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, uh, and take care, and I hope you're having a good, profitable reading weekend, book two.